Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Raising Reef. I'm Rob Shaw and in today's episode we're taking care of some invasive corals. So in my reef tank, I suffer with two nuisance corals. One is Pulsinic Xenia, which grows around the bottom of my lobo that I have on the sand bed. Um, it's hard to get rid of. I strip as much of it back as I can, and invariably there's the tiniest little bit of flesh left and that grows into a new coral. It's something I have to do between every six months and a year. Um, and if I don't do it, the chances are it will overwhelm the coral and the coral will die as a result of it. So I have to just keep doing it if I want to keep the lobo in good shape. The other problem I have is a small purple clove polyp, which seems to dominate the rocks on the top half of my aquarium. Uh, any place where there isn't corals, this stuff seems to be growing. Occasionally I will get in there with a toothbrush and I will brush it away and do a large water change to remove it. It's an ongoing battle at the moment. I don't know of anything that actually eats this clove polyp uh, that's suitable for a reef of my size. If I did, I would be certainly looking at putting one in there. Um, at this point, I just keep battling it on a month by month basis. So today I need to take care of the lobo. It's starting to get overwhelmed by the xenia, so I'm going to take it out and remove as much of the xenia off of it as I can. So when handling the rock in your reef tank or any of your corals, it's prudent to use some protection. Uh, protect your hands um, if you get cuts or you have cuts and any of the slime or any of the bacteria gets into your cut, you could end up with a nasty infection. Some corals are very toxic and if you inhale or ingest any of this stuff, you could become very sick, even possibly die. So it's worth taking precautions and giving it respect. When I'm handling corals outside of my tank, I will use latex gloves, so I don't come into direct contact with it, and I will be wearing some safety goggles, so in case something splashes up into my face, I don't get it in my eyes. Out of the way, prepare our area. I'm gonna put a towel down, just to uh, catch any drips. I'm going to be working on this stainless steel tray, just so that I don't, you know, cause too much of a mess. Um, I've got my safety gear, I've got some tweezers for pulling the Xenia off of the rock. Um, I have some mixed up salt water here that I can put the Lobo in, in periodically if it takes too long just to keep it moist. Um, and I also have a second one which I can use to put the pulsing Xenia in as I remove it and that will help to free it from getting stuck around the tweezers. So if you dip it in it tends to free it quite easily. Top tip for you there. Right, so first thing to do, put on my uh, very scratched safety goggles, squeeze my hand into this tiny latex glove, and take out the coral. Remove my jump guard from the top of my tank. Place the coral on there. And we can try and prise off some of this pulsing Xenia. I have left this a little bit too long to be fair, and I do believe that some of the um, some of the lobo is starting to recede where it's attached. So as you can see, I peeled some off there. I'll just drop that into that spare tub of salt water. It 
it's gone a little bit long this time. I usually do it long before it gets this bad. Um, hopefully the Lobo won't have suffered too much. Um, it's more the case that the Xenia grows so quickly that it just pretty much over grows and shadows out the Lobo and the Lobo slowly just recedes into its skeleton and if it gets shaded too much it will eventually die. This is perfectly natural behaviour, this is what happens on the reef. Corals are constantly fighting for space uh, and they will use various methods to overcome their neighbours. The pulse Xenia being a soft coral will emit uh, toxins into the water which suppress the growth of its neighbouring corals and allows it to expand and take hold. Uh, the lobo itself will extrude its guts out to its neighbour and basically dissolve their soft tissue and giving it space to grow itself. Uh, usually you'll find that the soft corals are uh, usually the winners in these battles. They seem to be able to uh, cope really well with the defences of more stony corals and the ultimate result is usually the death of the stony coral. So we want the lobo. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed from my previous videos that any pictures of my reef show that I've got three lobos in my tank. I do have a particular uh, affinity for them. I just think they're really nice and I much, we, I much prefer them to uh, Pulse and Xenia, that's for sure. So this part of the coral is almost completely dead so what I think I'll do is I might even cut that off. This is uh, previous damage, this area of dead coral. Uh, I stuck this coral in a new position and it was a bit close to another lobo, um, which was above it. And the lobo extruded its guts onto it and dissolved its uh, soft tissue. So um, it did recover halfway across that single polyp. It did, uh, it did recover and the half that wasn't dissolved uh, grew into a new head, but the problem with these skeletons is they have a lot of nooks and crannies and the Xenia is exceedingly good at finding its way right into all of those and if you don't remove every last bit of it you will end up with it growing back and once it starts to grow it really uh, it really can take hold. I think I'm going to chop that off with my coral cutters so that that doesn't get a chance to be grown over again. Uh, not that it's going to look that nice anyway because it's dead. So I'm doing my best to peel off as much of this Xenia as I can before popping it back in the tank. as you can see it from there but uh, there are as I'm squeezing this Xenia there are little shots of, uh, of juice flying out of it um, and you wouldn't really want to get that in your eye I can't imagine that that would do you much good it may not be um, as bad as palytoxin but who knows what's in it and hopefully we don't have to find out So this can be a little bit of a laborious process. Um, the corals usually fine out of water as long as it's moist, so they're usually pretty well good at, you know, keeping themselves uh, sucked into their skeleton and waiting for the water level to to return. I don't have to worry too much about it you know, turning belly up on me just because I've removed it from the water for a short period of time. So. some stubborn bits around this side. What I'm going to do is pop that in there for a second. Give that a chance to, uh, to hydrate. I'm going to grab my coral cutters and I'm also going to grab the toothbrush. I'm 
going to just basically scrub away around the edge of the coral and anywhere I can see some leftover Xenia flesh. in an attempt to stop it from growing back quite so quickly. I'm not really expecting to eradicate it to the point where it never grows back because I've had this stuff in my tank for probably 10 years and I haven't managed to get rid of it yet. In the early days, I quite liked it. I thought, oh yeah, that's quite nice. Um, until it started to grow on things I didn't want it. Um, and before long, yes, my uh, my fondness for that coral soon waned and I became quite happy to see it die. So, you can be quite aggressive with dead bits of coral, it's just calcium carbonate at the end of the day. I cut these bits off, it's less nooks and crannies for the Xenia to grab onto. putting up a fight. Now I can get in there and scrape away any that might be left behind. Is that possible? Probably. Okay, well it looks like I've done a pretty good job so far. It seems to have all been removed. It's sitting there for a moment. And, uh, clean this up a little bit. Good idea if you're working with corals or rock work around your tank that's uh, that's just come out of your tank. If you drop any parts on the floor or bits shoot off, uh, keep an eye on pets. If your dog eats any of this, it could make him very sick. So I'm going to remove this glove. Dry my hand. A bit did shoot off that my little. Uh, my little dog may pick up, so I'm going to make sure I find it before he does. There we go. So, that's the coral, all cleaned away, and it's time to pop it back in the tank. So now you're done with handling the coral, you can remove your gloves. Dry yourself off. And that about does it. It's, it's important to dispose of all of this with care and it's also important once you're done with all of this, give your hands and arms a thoroughly good scrub 
Uh, do not rush the job because it's time to sit down for lunch because you know you could be taking a trip to A and E. It's very important that when you're handling coral that you give it respect, and I can't emphasise enough that you take protection against potentially ingesting some of this liquid that comes out of these corals. So I hope you've learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and share it if you're so inclined. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video.